The periodicity topic in A-level chemistry is very under-revised and often overlooked. And in this short tutorial, I'm going to summarize all the content you need for the OCRA A-level in chemistry to help kickstart your revision ahead of your summer exams. Kicking off, of course, with a definition of periodicity, which is that it is the repeating patterns and trends across the periods of the periodic table. The elements in the periodic table are organized by increasing atomic number, and the periods, which are the rows, show repeating patterns and trends in both physical and chemical properties, whereas the columns, which we call groups, have elements in with similar chemical properties. We also have the elements organized by blocks. Now, the blocks identify the subshell location of an element's highest energy electron. Now, the highest energy electron for any element is the one that's in its outermost shell. It's its furthest away from the nucleus, but we describe them in the context of energy. For example, the S block elements that you can see identified on screen now have got their highest energy electron in an S subshell. We have the D block elements in the middle, the P block elements to the right, and then the F block elements at the bottom. Speaking of electrons, we're now going to move on to first ionization energy trends. First ionization energy is defined as the amount of energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. And the first trend we're going to look at, as you can see on screen, is across the period. And I'm going to use period three for this example. Now going across the period, what you can see from the chart is that there is a general increase in the first ionization energy values for our elements. The reason for that is threefold. First off, the nuclear charge is increasing. So as we move from sodium across to argon, the number of protons in the nucleus is increasing. That's what nuclear charge increasing means. Shielding by inner shells of electrons is staying similar. Atomic radius is decreasing, and the consequence of all of these things is that nuclear attraction on the outer electrons is increasing, and that's why first ionization energy generally increases across period three. But there are two anomalies that we need to discuss in detail. The first one is that the first ionization energy of aluminium is actually lower than that of magnesium, which is against the general trend. This anomaly provides evidence of subshells. The magnesium outer electron is in 3s2, whereas the aluminium outer electron is in 3p1. So you'll notice there that the outer electrons are in different subshells. Well, the aluminium outer electron, as a result of this, is higher in energy, and therefore there is less nuclear attraction, so it requires less energy to have its outermost electron removed. The next anomaly is that the first ionization energy of sulfur is lower than that of phosphorus. This anomaly provides evidence of orbitals. The sulfur outer electron is in 3p4, whereas the phosphorus outer electron is in 3p3. Now, the outer electron of sulfur is actually paired in an orbital, and this causes for repulsion, meaning that there's less nuclear attraction on the outer electron of sulfur. So that explains the two anomalies that break that general trend of increasing first ionization energy across period three. But what about down the group? Well, the trend in ionization energy down a group on the periodic table is a decrease. So across the period, it's an increase, whereas down a group, it's a decrease. Now here we've got no anomalies. We've just got two very clear reasons for the decrease. First one, atomic radius increases. And the next one, shielding increases. And therefore, the consequence of these is that nuclear attraction on the outer electron decreases. The next thing we're going to look at is successive ionization energies. Now, successive ionization energies aren't across the period or down the group. Here, we're looking at removing all the electrons one at a time from an individual element. Now, for this, there's a general increase in the amount of energy required as we move from the first to the second to the third and onwards ionization energies. Take a look at this chart for aluminium. As you can see, moving from the first to the second to the third, more energy is required. Now, the reason for this general increase is because there is increased attraction between the protons and the remaining electrons after each outer electron is removed, 
and radius decreases as well as the ion becomes increasingly positive. You'll also notice at the fourth successive ionization energy of aluminium, there's a large increase in the amount of ionization energy required. This is often referred to as the big jump. Now, this fourth electron must be in a lower energy shell, meaning that for aluminium, there were three electrons in the outer shell, and that's why it's in group three on the periodic table. The number of electrons removed prior to the large increase in the successive ionization energies tells us the group number of the element. Moving on now, we're going to take a look at the melting and boiling point trend across period three on the periodic table. I'm going to use melting point data for the graph here, but you can assume that the boiling point data is showing the same thing. So we're going to move from left to right and we're going to look at the different types of structure and bonding and how these lead for the pattern that can be seen here on this graph. So what we've got to begin with is sodium, magnesium and aluminium, our metals. Now they all have giant metallic lattice structures and you'll notice from the chart that's on screen now, there's an increase from sodium to aluminium and this is because the strength of metallic bonding is increasing. So why does aluminium have stronger metallic bonds that are requiring, requiring more energy to be broken and therefore giving it this higher melting point? Well, it's because aluminium has got more delocalized electrons and a greater ionic charge, it's aluminium 3 plus compared to sodium plus, which means there is a stronger attraction between the delocalized electrons and the positive metal cations in the giant metallic lattice. Moving away from the metals, we move on to silicon. Now, silicon has got the highest melting point in period three, and this is because silicon has got a giant covalent lattice structure, which has got strong covalent bonds extended all the way throughout. Now, in order to melt and boil silicon, you're going to need to break these covalent bonds. They're very strong and they require a lot of energy to be broken, which explains why silicon has got this really high point on the graph. Moving down again here, we've got phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon. And you'll notice these are significantly lower than most of the others in period three. And that's because they are in the simple molecular lattice structure category. Whilst they have got strong covalent bonds between the atoms within the molecules, what's being broken when these structures melt and boil is just weak London forces. That's why they've got such low points on this graph. But you'll also notice, along with the general decrease between phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon, there's a little bit of a blip. So sulfur appears to have the highest melting point out of the four. So why is that? The answer for that lies in the chemical formula you'll notice that sulfur is S8, whereas phosphorus is P4, then chlorine is Cl2, and argon is a noble gas, so it's an atomic gas, it's just AR on its own. Sulfur being S8 means that sulfur has got more electrons and therefore stronger London forces, which remembers the attraction that's being broken when these simple molecular lattice structures melt or boil. That gives it the higher melting point out of these four, with phosphorus being next, chlorine being third, and then argon being fourth out of these. So that takes you through a tour of the periodicity topic. What are you going to watch next? I'd recommend clicking the video on screen now, which takes you through the group two chemistry before moving on to the group seven halogens topic, as these are very often overlooked, and I want to make sure that you see them as individual topics to give you the best chance in the summer exam. Until next time, though, happy revising.